Is playing the bass ruining your body? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we bassists struggle with pain, tension, and injury more than just about any instrument. It's a big instrument and a challenge to manage, but there are many techniques to make playing the bass a bit easier. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get more comfortable when standing, when sitting, plus an extra tip at the end for keeping yourself healthy on the bass long-term. When standing, I try to keep my body posture as close to normal as possible. And I like to start my practice sessions without the bass in hand, just like I'm doing now. I get on the balls of my feet and I get into what you call an athletic position where I'm kind of leaning forward like I'm gonna downhill ski or jump forward or something like that. I let my arms dangle and I actually practice rotating my hips from side to side and letting my arms just kind of swing. This is the general position I wanna be in with my body in terms of standing and in terms of sitting too in many ways. Then I pick up the bass and I make sure I'm staying in that same relaxed and fluid position that I was in without the bass. And I'm really watching out for anything in my shoulders and back tightening. That is what I'm doing. I'm just scanning my body constantly. If you're digging this video so far, consider hitting that like button, even subscribing, and be sure to stick around to the end for that extra tip on staying healthy long-term. I keep my legs loose and I really try to think about plucking the string with my entire body or once I pick up the bow, then also just kind of thinking like this, like a giant finger and I'm using my entire body to get the string going. German bow, French bow, exact same sort of concept. Awareness at all times is really the key for keeping tension out of my playing. And once the tension creeps in, that's when the pain can start. That's when the injury can start. So just staying loose is the name of the game for me. Next in the day, I move into open strings and I'm just scanning, scanning as I'm doing this. I almost feel like there's like a blue light going up and down my body. And I'm just scanning for tension from my head all the way down to my feet. And I can feel my body nice and relaxed and I'm moving a little bit back and forth while I'm playing. I'm not trying to do any sort of artificial swaying to the music or anything like that, but, uh, but motion tends to be your friend in, well, in a lot of things in life, certainly in string playing and bass playing. And once you get yourself into a locked position, that's where things can start to creep in and habits, and that's when the danger can happen. I put my bass down all the time during my practice sessions. I take lots of little breaks, go get a drink of water. I'll intentionally keep my water away from me so that I'm getting away from the bass. I'm just checking in with my body and thinking about how am I walking around this room here? How can I translate that over to my bass playing? Shifting adds another variable into your playing, especially when you're standing. And I've done other videos on the topic. You can check out the description below for that. But in short, you just want to monitor your body while you're shifting and make sure that no tension is creeping in regardless of what you're doing in terms of the left arm. The same principles apply for sitting, but with a couple of twists. I wanna make sure I'm in an athletic position while I'm seated as well, which for me means staying at the edge of the stool and feeling that slightly leaning forward athletic stance. I also need to figure out what the heck to do with my left leg. Now there are a lot of different ways to sit on a stool from really low to really high. This stool, which I've done a video on, if you wanna check that out, it's in the description below. It'll let you go way up here or way down here. Most people try to strike some sort of a balance where they're not too low to the ground, but they're also not letting their legs dangle. Now the challenge comes with this left leg. If we have it on the floor, for some people that can work. But for me, if I do that, the base is just at a slightly uncomfortable angle. It's a little cello style, and I find that it's really challenging to get all the way over the G string. Feels nice and balanced, but ugh, it's just a little uncomfortable. So what I did for years and years and many people do is put the left foot on the rung of the stool. So that gets the bass in a bit of a better position for me and for many people. But it's a little unstable feeling. Having the right foot feels great on the ground, but having that left foot on the rung, it can just kind of make my body tense up. And I found that when I'm playing long rehearsals and concerts, I can feel that tension creeping into my back. And I know that's going to be an issue long term. So what I've been experimenting with is just using a plain old yoga block, or some people even use two of these and putting it on the ground. I used to do this with a guitar footstool back in college. 
uh, and then the slow movement would come and I would knock the guitar footstool over time and time again. But just getting your foot off the ground, even that much, the way I sit, all of a sudden I could feel everything releasing and relaxing in my back muscles and in my shoulder and feel so much more grounded this way. So works really well for me. Okay, here's that extra tip and it's really more of a mindset thing. Guess what? You're an athlete. Did you realize that? By picking up the bass, you've taken up an athletic pursuit. Congratulations, maybe you didn't realize, but the great bass teacher Paul Ellison calls bassists and all musicians really athletes of the small muscles. And as bassists, we need to keep our small muscles, but also our big muscles in good shape. That means treating your body just like any other athlete would. That means stretching, do strength training, aerobic conditioning. This includes going to the gym, lifting weights, keeping in good condition with nutrition, sleep, all that kind of thing. This is the stuff you've probably been hearing your entire life, but it makes a difference playing a musical instrument and especially playing the bass. Sometimes the aches and pains that you have on the bass are going to be solved by this overall athletic conditioning. These tips might sound boring, but I've interviewed hundreds of musicians and these are the things that make a difference in terms of playing long term. You should also treat your practicing like athletic training. That means taking breaks regularly, being careful not to overtrain, and we can get so ambitious when we're learning something, so that can be a real danger, and just thinking long term about the gains we want to make. If you're going to the gym and just starting to lift weights, maybe you're only starting with those 10 pound dumbbells or something like that, knowing that at a certain point you're going to be lifting bigger weights, thinking about the double base in the same way is a really healthy mindset. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, the Wabase Institute of the Honeywell Arts Academy. They're accepting applications for their 2022 summer program. The deadline is February 15th. I think this program is so cool. I was there in 2021 and got to experience it in person and it's such a unique program. It is a full scholarship performance institute. It fosters an inclusive, supportive environment where ideas are freely shared from teacher to student and vice versa. All programs at the Honeywell Arts Academy focus on fostering the human spirit by performing within the community to use music as a means to connect and heal. Eric Larson, Hal Robinson, Renan Meyer, congratulations on this long running program. Folks, get your application in by February 15th and I hope to see you there. Check out these videos for more tips on standing and sitting and we'll see you in the next one.